Well, hello everyone. I'm continually on my quest to find a place in my house that I can record in where I can get the focus right, and it's well lit enough, but there might be a bit of an echo, so you win some, you lose some. It's time to start talking about some of my favorites for the last few months. I tend to do these about quarterly whenever I get a list together of things. This is actually a list I put together back in early March and I filmed that video, but then I had issues with the focus and had to scrap it. And so I had to push it forward until I could film it again. So here we are. A handful of things here to talk about from household stuff to beauty stuff to planner related stuff. There will be timestamps below if that's all you're interested in. So I, I won't be offended, I promise. Normally on this channel, I love to bring up issues of consumerism, using your shit, like my project Stash Down. However, I also find Find a nice balance between trying to be really mindful of the things you're buying and also celebrating the things that are really working for us, especially if you can then help someone else find something that will work for them, which is kind of the lens with which I view my uh, favorites videos. You know, these are things that are working really, really well for me and I am loving having them, so they're making my life a little better, and if I can help you make your life a little better, or if you can help me make mine better by telling me in the comments something you've been loving in the last few months, then we'll all be happy together. This is an enabling space, at least on this video. We're gonna start with household stuff because I have so much household stuff this month. Probably the majority of everything I have is household related. We're gonna start with uh, something that I bought sort of on a whim, and it has become just chef's kiss, literally, because it's a chef item. It is the attachment for my KitchenAid stand mixer that grates cheese. So, I hate grating cheese. I hate it. I always wind up grating my knuckles or grating my nails. I, I hate that you're like holding it, trying to do it, and shit will start bouncing. I hate that I've graded for 50 years and then just as I think I have enough, my kids or my husband will swoop by and scoop a handful of it, eat it and run off and I have to grate more. I just, I don't like it. But I also recognize that especially in soup recipes and in other recipes where melting is really, really, really necessary, fresh grated cheese just works better, especially in soups. If you're, if you wonder why, it's because a prepackaged shredded cheese, which I'm not hating on, I also use that all the time, but it has cellulose on it, like a plant material. It's that kind of dusty shit you see to keep it from sticking and like clumping. But that in and of itself can inhibit, especially when you're mixing it into something like a soup, the like smooth melting. So if you're going to make a soup or something, using freshly shredded cheese always will melt better. But I hate doing it, so I wasn't doing it. And then we got a new KitchenAid stand mixer when we moved into this house because my old one we wound up getting rid of. It was, I'd had it since the early, like 2003. It was a wedding gift from my first marriage and it I loved it but I never had the counter space to keep it out so I didn't use it as often as I wanted to and it was leaking oil into the food so I was like nah, maybe not a good idea so we caught on sale bought the one I wanted and have now have it out on the counter because I have counter space for it and I found I use it a lot more when it's on the counter well, I had read that there's an attachment you can stick on the like the top of it. There's like a little spot where you can screw things on. My sister has the fucking meat grinder attachment, which I'm just, I'm not that motivated. But the, there's a attachment that you can put on that you can grind cheese and like shred, shred, grind cheese. You can shred cheese and you can slice vegetables or something. I haven't used any of the other bits that came with it, just the shredding cheese one because there's a macaroni and cheese recipe I have where it's really good with with already with like freshly shredded cheese, but it requires five cups of cheese. No thank you. So yeah, this thing is just coming majorly handy. You can put most of it in the dishwasher except for the outside piece. I just I love it. It's meaning I'm using my Lulu's fighting something in the front. The wind is blowing super hard outside, and Layla is crying from over where she's at by Jesse's office. It's a chaos this morning. Totally recommend it if you have a KitchenAid mixer that you keep out. If you're not gonna keep your mixer out, then it'll probably just be another gadget, right? That you just sort of put away. But I actually keep it in the mixing bowl on my counter. So it's always there for me to use it. I never forget that I have it. I'm also gonna add that if you don't already have a KitchenAid stand mixer, that's a very big investment for a cheese grater. <laughs> but if you have one already, 
it's totally worth it. Now we're about to go down the coffee rabbit hole because I have several things that are related to coffee. The first is our new Nespresso machine. We got it as our Christmas present to ourselves. I originally decided I wanted to get it to try and drop caffeinated soda because I'm, that's my no soda goal for the year is, is high on my list. I had given up dark sodas because of phosphorus as a kidney disease thing and then was only drinking clear sodas like ginger ale when my stomach was upset. And then we moved and I got stressed and I picked right back up on the Dr. Pepper habit and because my phosphorus levels are fairly decent, I felt justified in doing it, but I need to stop in order to be compliant with all the things they want from me from the kidney disease standpoint. So dropping soda is important. It's not the caffeine that's the problem, it's the phosphorus. So I have uh, thought about getting an espresso because my problem with coffee drinks from somewhere like regular coffee is that I don't love regular coffee. I have to add so much to it to make me like it. I like coffee drinks like lattes and things like that, but I found that the sweetness levels, I can't ever get them right. I don't like very sweet stuff, but I also don't like completely not sweet stuff. And no matter what I've done with like say Starbucks, I haven't been able to get it right. So it's just kept me off of drinking it. So I was like, maybe we'll get an espresso. But then I thought Jesse would laugh at me. Instead, he was like, no, I used the shit out of it when I was at the office. So we got it. We got the um, Nespresso Virtuo. Next question mark. I believe it's the next. It's the one that you can make a full carafe of coffee as well as other sizes. And we have used the shit out of it. We use it. We have, we wound up using it for a couple months and then we bought the carafe because Jesse has it now when he has like a long stretch of meetings and he just makes a big thing of coffee and brings it back there. We use it to make lattes. We use it to make regular coffee. We already had the frother, so we didn't get the set that came with the frother, but the frother has come in handy with it. So we have a whole coffee set up. We love the shit out of it. All four of us use it for different things and it has very much become um, a like beautiful purchase. And we bought it when we were, when it was on sale much like the KitchenAid stand mixer, caught it when it was on sale and brought it home and have been thrilled. We also live near a Nespresso boutique. There's one at one of the malls near us, about 15 minutes away. And so it's really nice to go in there and like talk to the baristas, buy our coffee there. So we don't have to go through the rigmarole of ordering it. We can just bring all of our recycled pods in with us and then pick up new coffee, which I actually need to do this weekend. So good reminder. On that same note, one of the things that I personally am a big fan of from the Nespresso line, my favorite pod, is the Voltesso uh, Espresso Pod. It's their like lighter, like kind of blonde espresso. It's light, it's not, I don't know how to talk about coffee. It's just, it's not super in your face. It blends really, really well with the um, oat milk that we use because my kid and I are both lactose intolerant and so drinking a lot of milky products just is not good for the, the digestion. Jesse and RJ both like the Melozio regular like coffee as well as Jess loves the I making the iced coffee with the iced forte. And then to continue the coffee theme, I have two mugs. One mug was a gift from my sister. It has a quote on the back that says, distance means so little when someone means so much. And then on the front is this amazing picture of my sisters and I with, like I'm not allowed to cut my hair now so I can't put it in a braid because the braided one with the rosé is me, the bubbly rosé. The middle one with like the off the shoulder shirt with the red hair holding like a cocktail is my sister Amy. And then the blonde and the ponytail with the hoodie and the coffee is my baby sister, Becca. It has our names on it and it has us looking off at the mountains together and I just love it. She got, my sister got this for each of us for Christmas. This mug makes me smile every time I see it. The other mug, and I know Jesse's like, fucking more mugs, Cindy, whatever, um, is from Mud Love, and it is one of their customizable mugs where you can get like stuff put on them. And I got my word of the year, replenish. I got this idea from Jen Ross. Normally I pick a word of the year and I kind of, I'm like, okay, here's my word of the year. Okay, let's move on with our lives. But this year my replenish word is very important to me. I separated my work goals and my personal goals in order to replenish my personal life. I joined the One Little Word class with Allie Edwards and I'm doing that every month to bring replenish into my life and I wanted to get a mug that would remind me of it and so I got this one and I really love it. I love that I got the cream on cream. You can do other colors, but this one is one of my favorites. I don't know if I'm gonna do it every year. This is a special year for me in terms of how I'm 
interacting with and bring a sense of fucking cheesy, but like how I am utilizing the whole word of the year concept this year, having a mug with it on it felt right, but it seems a little indulgent. I don't think it's something I'm gonna do every year, but these are beautiful mugs. And I am, if you didn't know, on a like handmade pottery kind of kick right now. I've even signed up for a pottery class this summer. So it made sense. And then before we head out of the kitchen, I have a recipe. It is a sheet pan chicken recipe. It's very simple. It's you roast uh, thinly pounded <laughs> chicken on a pan with cut up potatoes and like say green beans. The magic with this is in what you marinate the chicken in. It's like a mixture of lemon juice and garlic, lots of garlic, fresh parsley, butter. Oh, it's so good. I think it's lemon juice. I might be wrong about that. I'll link it below in the blog that I got it from. It is a very yummy recipe. We actually have had to double it and just do a tray of chicken and a tray of vegetables because my kids are like, you need more mom. It's so good and it's so easy. You can marinate the chicken ahead of time so you can just put it all in the oven really quickly when you cook or you can just do it at the beginning. It's either way, it's yummy. So 10 out of 10 recommend, especially if you're looking for like an easy dinner. A couple of beauty and fashion related things. One, I don't have a picture of and I'm not gonna go grab it because it's in my closet right now. It's, but it's my winter coat. And the reason I wanted to bring it up is because I have a fun story behind it. So this coat is from Fabletics. I don't think they sell it anymore. It is a down, real puffy winter coat that comes down to my knees. And I'm 6'2", so that's a fairly long coat. Zips up, has a really nice wide hood. If you've seen on Instagram any of the pictures or like stories of me with my like big like Yeti looking hood on, it's that coat. That's That is my winter coat. It's white and it have got a coffee stain, so I need to take it to get dry cleaned once this like season is over. The reason I love this coat is not just that it's like the perfect coat for winter, but the story behind it. So what happened was, Originally, we were supposed to go to Bend, where my sister lives in Oregon, for Christmas in 2020. That was the year we had my kids for Christmas. It was gonna be the last year we had my kids for Christmas when we were still living in Napa and we were on the week off, week on custody situation while they were both still in high school. So we wanted to go to Bend and have fun Christmas with my sister and my other sister and her family were gonna go up there. It was gonna be so much fun. And then 2020 happened and my sister Amy, whose house is in bed, is a transplant recipient. And so she's very immunocompromised. So we were not gonna wind up going. Well, I had bought this coat in anticipation of going. And once we uh, realized we weren't gonna go, I was like, what the fuck did I spend the money on this coat for? This is way more than I need for like Napa, California winters. Well, fast forward then to the end of January, 2021, and we found out we were moving to Denver and suddenly this coat that I had bought that I felt was, was for like a one trip purpose is now like the greatest thing. It saw me through this winter because it was so cozy and warm and just long. It kept the wind from hitting my thighs. Just such a good coat for the winter. I'm gonna get it dry clean and wear it again next year. So nice. <laughs> so it was one of those purchases that I felt like I had wasted money on and then suddenly realized that what did they say? Jurassic Park life finds a way. The other thing that I really love in terms of kind of like apparel or whatever, I will pop a picture up here because if I showed it to you right now, you'll see all the crap that I have to clean it out. It's a never ending struggle. It's my new purse. Got it from Madewell. It is their medium. I believe it's their medium. It's a crossbody. So my purse situation is kind of complicated. I love gigantic tote bags and purses, but I fill them like to the brim. I fill any bag I have. If there is space, I will fill it. And I have problems wearing those because on my left shoulder, I have a fistula and I'm not allowed to put purses on this shoulder to cut off circulation because it can be really dangerous for me. My right shoulder, I have some nerve problems from years and years of bending over a sign table doing work. Like from the work I've done, I have a repetitive motion type injury in this shoulder. So what actually really works for me is a crossbody if I can wear it across this way. And I was doing that with a bigger bag and then with a smaller bag. And much like Goldilocks, the bigger bag was too heavy. The smaller bag, I was like, stuff was shooting out the top of it. I needed something that was just right. And this Madewell bag is perfect. It's leather, it smells good. Oh my God, it smells so good. It's getting beaten up already. And I love the look of beaten up leather. It is just one big pocket with a small pocket on the side. There's like a little kind of front pocket as well that I just don't use. It comes with a crossbody strap and a shorter strap. I haven't used the shorter strap, but it, the, the option is there. 
if you want it. And it's just the perfect size for what I need. It's like, yay, yay, holds my wallet, my sunglasses with some room to spare, which normally I fill up with receipts, which is the current situation. It was not inexpensive. It was about 150 bucks when I bought it but I will wear it for a long ass time. And if I know myself with purses, I'll probably put it on the shelf for a while and then rediscover it like I did this year with some other purses of mine. And then beauty wise, I only have one thing and it's really less beauty and more fuck I need this. And that is the Gold Bond Ultimate Healing Cream. So this healing hand cream. So this stuff is supposed to repair dry problem hands, non-greasy, light, fresh scent, absorbs in seconds. It is non-greasy. It does absorb in seconds and it does have a nice fresh scent, but the scent is very like lotion-y. Like it has that like kind of grandma lotion smell, which is the one thing I don't love about it. This is my second bottle and I'm almost out of it. It's very cheap. You can get it at Target for like three bucks. Yeah, it doesn't smell bad. It just, it has that like, <sighs> my grandma had like Avon lotion. It kind of reminds me of that. I don't know if I'm right about that or not, but that's what it seems. Anyway, my hands have been super dry because of both the winter and how dry the air is here in the Denver suburbs and moving here from California. My skin is like, what the fuck? On top of that, I'm on diuretics because of my kidney disease. So I am just, I'm, my skin is a mess this winter. And this cream, I tried the balm, I think it's a Eucerin balm that there were some people, Julie Plans being one of them, who recommended them on Instagram and they were like, it's not greasy. I beg to differ, my friends. It was like Vaseline on my hands, which there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm getting really skeeved out by like the feel of stuff like that on my hands. It wasn't the business for me. This worked. Now, I've gone through two bottles of this and I'm gonna keep it in my drawer in case I need it, but I am actually using this Kiehl's Ultimate Strength Hand Salve because the smell is better and it's actually even less greasy. I really love this stuff, but this stuff is pricey. I don't know if I'm gonna buy this again or not. But in the meantime, I've been loving this. But this, if you're looking for a good hand cream and your hands are dry as fuck, this is actually not greasy. So good, good, good choice for that. Now, before I talk about the couple of planner things on my list, I want to bring up a podcast and it's not even the whole podcast. I keep itching. I'm sorry. My sweater's making me edgy today and I've worn this before. What the fuck? Uh, this podcast, I actually don't like the whole podcast. It's not that I don't like it. I just, I find some of the guests to be grating and I'm just not into it all the time. But this particular series, not only was it a topic I was interested in, but the guest was a perfect guest for the podcast. And that was the Czar Nicholas was a real dick series on Behind the Bastards. It's basically a four part series about Czar Nicholas II, the last Czar of Russia and his wife, Alexandra. They talk about Rasputin. They talk about a bit about the uh, Russian revolution. They talk about like the context leading up to it. It's a good series if you're interested in that period of history, and I am. I'm in the middle of reading books about the Romanovs right now. Like I said, the podcast as a whole, not always one of my favorites, but this particular episode, I was like checking my phone every day to see if they had uploaded the next part. And I knew most of the history. It's not like it was a surprise to me. So just want to let you know. Okay, planner and stationery wise. The pen that I'm loving this last quarter, which has quickly become my favorite new pen to use, is the Pentel RTX Energel in 07. It's the same Energel ink, which I really, really love. I love how black it is. I love how non-smeary it is. But it's this particular tip. It's a needle tip pen. I just really like it. It's very comfortable. And you can buy them at Target. Just, I mean, there's not much else I could say about that. They're cheap, they're comfortable, they write nicely. You can buy them at the store. Anything else I need to say about that? And then two Moxie Life things to wrap us up, to bring us home. The first is the Moxie Life pen pouch. Now I'm aware that these pen pouches are everywhere. Like all sorts of people make these pen pouches. I love the color of this one, for one, because it coordinates with my planner. More on that in a minute. It works really well. It holds all my pens. It won't, it won't zip if I've got my palette knife in here, but I never zip it. I never use that function, but it would zip with all the rest of my pens in here. What I keep in it is my Pentel RTX. I keep the pens I use to write on Chrissy and Design stickers, my palette knife I use to cut washi, and then I keep all of the Zig Dot pens and Zebra Mild Liners that I'm currently, that I use as my goal colors, like so the eight colors for the Moxie Life goal system, as well as any of the other ones that I happen to be using this week. 
and they all stay in here. And then this goes, this is always on my desk or it goes into my tote bag that I put with my planners to bring upstairs when I'm trying to stay out of my office. It's just nice to have something that's soft so I can like manipulate it to get it into the tote bag. It's cute, it looks good on my desk and it's handy. And so there's all those reasons why I love it. And then finally, and this should be no surprise, if you have been watching my channel, um, my final current favorite is my Moxie Life Planner. This is the seven by nine, six month undated vertical. And I love it. I love the coil. This is such a fucking sexual coil. I love the, uh, the layout of it. I have used it consistently every week. And most importantly, I am really, really loving having my goals and my plans for personal all in the same spot. It keeps me on top of them. It keeps me on top of the check-ins it on the reflections. And it's just, it's very helpful for me. I'm in a good routine of it. And I've already purchased via the 40% off imperfect sale, my six month planner for the rest of the year, because I know I'm going to stay in it. I'm not bored. I'm not even close to bored with it. I will say they did send me this one, but I'm not being paid to say this. I just am really, really loving it. My biggest reason for picking the six month over the, the, um, the, flagship yearly, which is what I originally was going to go with because I wanted to keep all the year in one spot, is that the habit trackers are neutral. And that was the biggest reason. Not even the sexy quilt. It was the habit trackers being neutral. So if they come out with a flagship next year with neutral habit trackers and like neutral week layouts, as opposed to the colorful week layouts, uh, I might go with that, even if they still use the YRO binding. But Generally speaking this year, I am thrilled with the change that I made both in separating personal and work goals, bringing them into here and using this planner. I am absolutely happy with this system and it was a great choice to make and I don't see it changing anytime in the near future. So those are my current favorites. I'm already starting to make my next list because like I said, this video is running about a month late, but ugh, fucking, you don't even care about that. Like really, does it matter? No, but whatever the case may be, help me along in my next group of favorites. Let me know stuff you are loving in the comments below because like I said, these particular videos on this channel are an enabling space. Now I gotta get going because I have pets wandering the house and I need to take one for a walk. So. I hope you have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, my dudes, peace.